next week and we'll identify a blood cell when you see it on a slide. In addition, do the stuff that's listed in your packet. You have to tell me how many there are, what their job is. So you're going to memorize a bunch of stuff in your packet in addition to looking at it. You want to go to JDoc and make sure you read what this guy is saying, or girl, because they actually walk you through really easily what the different blood slides are doing and all that. So I'm just going to walk you through some slides at random from JDoc. And then we'll see if we can discern what I'm staring at. Let me see if I know what I want to do. Here's the most classic view you'll see under a scope come next week your exam. So you're going to look at that and say, Mr. Christie, what do I see? First thing you're going to identify are these. Red blood cells. Red blood cells are erythrocytes, remember. <laughs> you're going to identify these. Platelets. 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 Those are the easy ones. Then you got the white blood cells. You have to identify... Further, so white blood cells, you want to remember, never let monkeys eat bananas. That's the order. So neutrophil is the most common, lymphocyte, monocyte, eosin, basophil. So if in doubt, it's going to be a never or let. Those are over half of the cells. So if you just remember the order and you look, well, just statistics say it should be a neutrophil in there somewhere. So neutrophils look like this. How would you identify, how would you say, what do you, what do you see there? No. Yeah, multi-lobe nucleus, it can be two, can be three, can be more, but they have this granules. lots of little lobes, and they're considered a granulocyte, even though you can't see the granules <coughs> per se, they should be spotted. And that's why they have an ending of fill. If they say fill, they have speckles. If they say site, they don't. So granulocytes are the fills, A granulocytes are the sites. So this is a neutrophil, because if you look carefully, there's speckles in the cytoplasm of the cell. They're very faint, but they're speckly. They're granulocyte, and those are neutrophils. This one is not a neutrophil. That is a what? Lymphocyte. Lymphocyte, that's the let. It's a cell, it's a site, so it doesn't have speckles. The nucleus is basically the whole cell. You don't see much cytoplasm. So the trick on a lymphocyte is just a, a dark purple circle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how that's great. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. No? Makes sense? So, phosphorus slide. Reds, platelets, lymphocytes, neutrophils. Doing okay? So you're going to look at the nucleus, you're going to look at the speckling, kind of the overall shape. The problem is they vary a lot, so you have to sort of use all your instincts. What about the other fills? The other fills. Let's find those. Let's go back to this picture. Okay, let's do this guy in the upper right. Neutrophil. 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 This one down here. Neutrophil. Exactly the same. Neutrophil. This one. Lymphocyte. And lymphocyte. Those are the most common ones. Neutrophils, multiple lobe nucleus. Maybe you see speckles. Lymphocytes, all going to be dark. Very little cytoplasm. So those are most. That's the two most common ones. So if you keep claiming you see a base of film, they'll laugh because you don't. Let's keep going. So. Oh. It turns on. Name the white blood cells you see there. Start up there. Lymphocyte again. Neutrophil. 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 Yes. On an exam, just say neutrophil lymphocyte. You might expect a fever in the blood, right? All right. This one is not a neutrophil or a lymphocyte. Like a monocyte. It's a monocyte. This is actually one of the harder ones to name because they vary a lot in their size and shape. Your book will say they're always bigger than the red. That's normally true, but not always. So don't use size as the sole criterion. So what you want to do is look at the nucleus versus the cytoplasm. Normally the nucleus in a monocyte is about half-ish. So you can see that there's a lot more cytoplasm in the lymphocyte. It usually is a horseshoe or a kidney bean, not always. But you look at that and say, that doesn't look like a lymphocyte, and it doesn't look like a neutrophil. Therefore, it's going to be a monocyte, the third most common. Make sense? So personally, these ones are always hard because they vary a lot more than the other ones do. They look for size, along with nucleus, along with no speckles, along with cytoplasm size. That's a monocyte. So it fills up, a it fills up less of the cytoplasm than the lymphocyte. Right. So I'm not an artist. You I know see, that. You see more of right. the cytoplasm. So, a lymphocyte, normally, you'll see all a dark circle and a little sliver like a little moon of cytoplasm. That's the lymphocyte. In a monocyte, you'll sort of see, you know, you'll see more cytoplasm. <coughs> with the, nucleus. the nucleus may be bigger than the lymphocyte, but you'll see that it's not all the cell that you see, traditionally. 
that's one clue. So let's try that one. Let's go. Upper left, name it. Monocyte. Monocyte. Middle one, name it. Monocyte. Monocyte. In fact, he's oozing over there. But again, bigger than those, normally kind of kidney bean, horseshoe shaped nucleus. It takes about half fish of the cell, normally. This one's a little different, but again, you get the gist. That's not a lymph, that's not a neutrophil. No speckles. All right, so use all the clues. Let's talk about speckles. Let's find a speckly one. Can anyone find an, a granulocyte for me on this picture? Eosinophil. Right here. This is an eosinophil. It's going to be, that's granular, lots of speckles all over. Normally these are reddish, not always, so don't always say the red one. Normally they are. And if you can look at the nucleus, it has this weird sort of figure S, bilobed, kind of ampersand sort of shape. But it's going to be speckled enough that you'll notice it. You'll see the dots. Right. So up here is also a granulocyte. Who's that one up there? That's a neutrophil. So get a fill. But this one you can see has a lot less speckles. This one has a lot more speckles. But they're both fills because they're both granulocytes. Right. He's the second to most rare. j Dog actually doesn't have a basal fill at all. I'll show you how rare they are. I have to go someplace different to get you a basophil. So give me a second here to go somewhere else and get you a basophil. I'm going to go to Boston University and use their website for a second. Where's blood? Oh, where's blood? Blood on you? Blood. All right. So this is in Boston. Let's go through the, these are all the granulocytes. I can tell because they're speckled. Let's do Mr. Easy down here. No, This one. That's neutrophil. Even though it's not red, you can see the speckles in the nucleus. Look at that beast up there. That's a basophil. They're very, very speckled. In fact, they're so speckled, you can't see anything but speckles. Right? So you won't see a nucleus. There's one in there. But it's going to be just ink blob kind of shape. Very distinctively dark speckles. Mm -hmm. That's the most rare, less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. In my years of doing this, it's very hard for me to find one of those on a slide if I don't want to spend three hours looking for it. Mm -hmm. So the chance of me finding one on a slide and putting it on your test is based upon how much time I want to be here, which is not as much as you think. <laughs> so I rarely put basophils on a, on a slide. It just takes me an hour to find one, unless I'm lucky. The chances are neutrophils, lymphocyte, monocytes, those I can find in two seconds. Eosinophils take me about 20 minutes. That one takes me longer. Just because it's the most rare, it's unlikely I'm going to see it on a slide. Right? But you should still know it. Just realize, don't keep saying basophil on your exam. Probably not the one I found. <laughs> that, Go for it. That one is a neutrophil, but it looks oddly like the other one. This one? Is it because the nucleus isn't attached that it's not? No, yeah, no, the other one. This one? Yeah. It's more granular. You can see it's more speckled than this one. And the nucleus, it's hard to see because of speckles, but it makes kind of this two lobes shifted. A neutrophil usually has about three, kind of like a clover leaf. Oh, so of. that is an eosinophil. Yes, yeah, E is an oh, eosinophil. Okay, this is neutrophil. This is eosinophil. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the neutrophil has more than two lobes? Normally more than two. Oh, okay. It usually is three, but it doesn't have to be three. But you're going to notice it looks more like a... <laughs> yeah, it just looks distinctly different. Hard to say. So does the E-sinophil always have two? Yes, it should have two, get kind of shifted like that. Yes? Okay, without sounding like a complete smart ass, but yeah. what is the importance of knowing the distinction between these different So someday, when you work as a pathologist in a hospital, um, you can tell what the infection people have. If you have worms, your eosinophil count goes up, because that's what happens when you have worms. So if you, not that you're ever going to do this, but if you look at a slide and see eosinophils are up, you can say the patient has worms. If the basic are up, you have an allergy. So knowing the different cells when you see them tells you what's wrong with the person's immune system. Wouldn't that include also parasites? Yeah. <laughs> right. And also because these is thou shalt know. That's also why you're learning this. At some point. But there is a, the more you know the blood cells, the easier it is to diagnose someone just from the blood count. So you see the pills are up, you got some parasite. You went to yeah. South America for your yeah. Make sense? So thou shalt know the blood slides. So look for nucleus, look for coloring, speckles. Look for shape, 
Practice, practice, practice. Take a picture of that poster wherever it went with your phone. Yeah, where did it go? Good plan. So let's look at the heart for a little bit. Let us do that. It's the where the white blood cells live in a test tube. It looks buffy. Yes. Give me a second to find my sheet here. <coughs> yes. Okay, so for the heart lab, you know, it's going to be basically on models. One of the problems with the models is they're all slightly different. So you're, you're stuck doing that classic one in the mall. I'm just going to walk through some of the things on the list, not maybe everything. The biggest thing you want to do to be successful with the heart is figure out right from left. Because if you get it wrong, every answer will be wrong. You should be memorizing what's on the right, and pretty soon you're telling me it's a bicuspid when it's a tricuspid, and then I'm just laughing as I'm taking points away. So, I don't. I cry, but okay. So what you want to do is visualize this picture, and this is what a normal heart looks like in a patient. So this patient's right, patient's left. So a couple little tricks, it varies. The plumbing comes out the top. If you look at the apex, which is the A, it tends to point kind of a little to the left, not always. You want to look at these blood vessels here, how they cross like this and down that. So if you visualize that in your head, hopefully you'll always get the right and the left correct. So the apex tends to point to the left. You tend to have a red thing this way, a red thing this way. The aorta kind of goes up and back. But try to figure that out, because if you get it wrong, you're doomed. But let's go through it. Pretend you got this right. Let's find some things. I said apex was here. Where's the base? The base is the top. It seems backwards, but this is a triangle. The base is the flat apex. The base is the top of the heart. So, like, where the veins are all in? Yeah, so base, if I were pointing up here, you could say that's all the base, where the plumbing is at the top. It's not as much a thing as a place. Okay, so tell me what you call the sac around your heart. Pericardium, right? Around my heart. Peri around cardium. So the visceral would be where? The heart, the on the heart. Remember, visceral means on the organ. The parietal would be on your what? What's that? The, the cavity. The that cavity. The, cavity. the chest, yeah. right? So visceral is always on the organ. Parietal is always on the cavity. So you have those two mixed serous membranes from 231 you're supposed to know. And what's between the visceral and parietal? What lives in that little space? <laughs> fluid. Serous fluid. Very good. Go back to 231 and review that again. What do you call the muscle of a heart? Myocardium. Myocardium. Very good. So the sac that's in the pericardium, the muscle, the myocardium. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start cutting into our heart. So right's on your left. Right, so let's cut in. Will work. Yay. Roman numeral one. Tell me what room that is. Atrium. Which one? Right. Right, right atrium. Patient's right, upper room. Roman numeral three, tell me what it is. Right ventricle. Right ventricle. Roman numeral four. Left ventricle. Left ventricle. And you can't see the other one. It's back in there. But again, get your right and left straight. So if this is the right atrium, that's the right ventricle. Number three is a valve. Which one? Tricuspid. Tricuspid. You try before you buy. Number six is the bicuspid. E. What about pulmonary? Because it's coming off my right side into number four. What tube is number four? Pulmonary arteries, leaving my right side going to my lungs. You can't see the veins, so the pulmonary veins would be going in the other side. Let's do number seven. Aorta. 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 Let's do number one. Uh, Vena cava. cava would be good or superior to be formal because on the upper part. So again, think about the stuff you did in lecture. Now let's name some more things down here. You're going to name... These little H's, these little long stringy things that you mentioned in lecture. Cordae tenine, literally heart strings. Now the trick is, if you look where I is pointing, that's where the cords attach to your heart. What do you call the things the cords are stuck to in the heart? Papillary something. Papillary what? I don't know. Muscles. So the valves are the flaps. The white things, the cords are cordae tendine, and the bumps where the cords attach are the papillary muscles. So they're not all the same thing, they're all dealing with the same work. Can you say that one more time? 
Sure. So, for example, three tricuspid valve, H chordae tendine, the strings, and I is the papillary muscle where the string is glued into your heart. So those papillary muscles are the glue that hold the strings in. Can you point to the papillary muscles? I can't. It's hard to see in the picture, but I'm going to say I. You follow the strings down. Those bumps. Now, there's some more language. If you look in the ventricles, all that folded, bumpy looking myocardium has a name. What do you call the netted meat of the ventricle? No? Trabeculae carne. If you go above your cordae tendine, trabecula means kind of netted, carne. Meat. Meat. Literally, Roman. Made of meat. So the bumps in your ventricle, all of them, are trabeculae carne. There's a different word for the bumps in your atrium. Atrium is sort of like near your chest. Pectinate muscles. So classic question on a quiz. Pectinate muscles are in your atria. Papillary muscles are in the ventricle, but the trabeculae carne are in the ventricle of the bumps, not the muscles. Does that all make perfect clear? Okay. Right. Yeah. Pectinate muscles are in your atria. Papillary okay. muscles are in your ventricle. And trabeculae carne is all the bumps in the ventricles. Even the pectinate. Yes, papillary. even the papillaries would be part of the trabeculae carne. That okay. should be above 40 On 25 in the middle. Yeah, it should be above the. Uh, uh, Trabeculae yeah. carne is in the ventricles and the atria? No, pectinates in the atria, trabeculae carne is the ventricles. And it's just the, the, the folds? Yeah, the lawyer. bumpies, the folds. So the cordae tendine, uh, it's the same name for both sides yes. of the. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, so be careful of those muscle words because pectinate, papillary, they're similar but not the same. So we got our valves, we got our, our, our heart strings and our bumps. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to change models slightly, just because you hate me so. Alright, so these models are a little more difficult to learn because there's so much more going on with them. Well, let's see if we can review what you learned. And Figure that out. So, number 26, I'm going to say is a room or chamber. What chamber would it be? Right atrium. Number 23 is a chamber there. That would be? Right ventricle. Right ventricle. So, tell me 61. Tricuspid. Tell me 83. Tricuspid. Tell, tell me 68. That's the book. Capillary muscle. That's just what we went through. So. It's just a little different view, all right? But what we're going to do now on these ones is we're going to focus on the stuff on the outside of the heart now, which are your coronary arteries and veins. I'm going to go back to the outside. It's kind of off to the side slightly. yeah. Okay, so the blood vessels on the outside of the heart are called your coronaries. They feed the heart. So the trick is, again, you have to know right from left. If you go to page 26, they list all these coronary arteries. And here's where the life gets exciting. We didn't really have time to talk about this lecture. But you remember your circle of Bruce Willis in your brain? Yeah. You know that thing? Why was it a circle? Because they all circulate. Really. Your heart does the same thing. These blood vessels all connect to each other. They're all one big ring. We just name them differently everywhere you're looking. So if you're on a model with your finger, you'll end up being in the same place more than one way. But it's, they're named differently. So the trick is to realize most of these things are all the same tube. Just name the different regions you're at. So if I point to 37 at the blood vessel on the left side of my heart, what would you call a blood vessel on the outside of the left side of my heart? That's my left coronary artery because it comes out of my left side. Okay. If there's a left coronary, that tells you there should be a what? Right coronary. Say that's true. Indeed, there it is. That's coming out on the right side on the surface of my heart. That's my right coronary. All right? Now, if you look at the right coronary, if you come down here, you'll notice it starts to go 
kind of under my heart. So if you look right, right here, right, it starts to curve under. Posterior intra. And then it'll come back up over here. That's the same blood vessel all the way around. But we give it different names just to mess up your life. Okay. So, let's go back to this one. This was my left coronary artery. You notice it splits here. And part of it goes around the back of the heart. It would come back around over here. It's going to make a circle under your heart. Can anyone look on your list and find something that says circular? Circumflex. circumflex. So the right and the left basically circumflex and go under the heart. It's easier to see when you look, you're looking at the model than not. Then part of it goes down the front of your heart. How would you say down the front of your heart? Anterior interventricular artery. Thank you. Anterior interventricular <laughs> artery. In front, between my ventricles, artery. That's right here. The anterior interventricular. It goes between my ventricles in the front. So your right becomes the anterior interventricular and also becomes a circumflex, like right there on the picture. Circumflex is where the right branch is behind the heart. There's the, I'm sorry, the left branch is behind the heart. And there's the anterior interventricular one. So, and then it would come around the other side. So now we're going to name some sulcuses thingy, mothers. Mm. Your, an your, your anterior interventricular is actually in a little groove. How do you say groove in the brain? Okay. So what do you call that groove there where it's living? Anterior interventricular sulcus. Yes, they match the same. So the artery and the sulcus are named the same. So the anterior interventricular artery is living inside the anterior interventricular sulcus or groove. So that yellow part is the sulcus. The yellow part. On the model, it doesn't always look like a groove, but it is. Why does it look like lipid? Why does it look because like it is. Your heart's bathed in fat. Okay. Your heart loves fat. The question indicates it. As long as it's not in the artery. Yes. Vein. Yes. Okay. okay. So let's do this one. Let's go back to this one here. Depending on the model you're on, it varies somewhat. On this model, this red one right where my mouse is, I believe is interpreted as being the marginal, because it's on the edge. On the other models, it's actually further down. So I'm just going to make a blanket statement. If one of them's over here on the right side, that's going to be the marginal. But it should be on the edge of the heart, so margin of the heart. That's the marginal artery. So I have my right coronary becoming my circumflex, with my marginal going down the side. Make sense? Here's the problem. The veins are named differently. They're named cardiac, not coronary. So you have coronary arteries and a cardiac vein. And luckily for you, there's only one vein you have to know, really, of any great importance. If we turn the heart around, look at number 43. That looks like a very big vein, does it not? How would you say big vein of the heart? The great cardiac vein. It comes across your heart and drains that blood in here. Just before it goes in your vena cava, there's a big opening there. How would you say opening in the heart? The coronary sinus. So the cardiac vein, that's a coronary artery. Same meaning, different. Which one was the coronary sinus? Great cardiac vein, coronary sinus. The great cardiac vein goes to the coronary sinus? Yes, that's where it drains in your vena cava. They're all basically one part. So just be careful because it's C and C, but cardiac for the vein. I will dock you wrong if you put coronary vein or cardiac artery. That's <coughs> not what it is. Okay, so be careful on the coronary. Spend some time tracing them out with your fingers. They connect. So you've got to be looking at the different parts. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much inside the heart where you know it to be. Right? Think. Oh, let me point out one other little thing on the inside of the heart. That will confuse you no end. Because it depends on the model you have, what it says. Look at K on this picture. What is that, and where is it? What is that? That's the top Let's find out. Yes. Right. So, inside your 
atrium, there's a hole when you're a baby between the right and left that closes. So when it closes, it makes a depression that's oval, literally in Latin. So that's your fossa ovalis. If you were a baby, it'd be the foramen ovale, because it's a hole when you're a baby. The problem is on every model, they're showing that differently. So some will be high, some will be low. Some will be oval, some will be a circle. So you don't want to memorize oval up here because one of the models has it as a circle. Just find something on the inside wall that should look vaguely circular. And that would be the fossa ovalis. Is it between, can you say it's between AC and FA nodes? It's between, yeah, it is, but it's between the right and left atrium, actually. It's between the interatrial wall. Okay. That's huge. No way. That's yeah. That's the sinus. And the sinus comes into right next to it, so you might see a sinus too. So let me show you why this can be complex. Let me go back to this one, this one, this one, this one. Last little blurb here. Okay, so the fossa ovalis on this model is 58. It's like a half oval. These represent the blood vessels or the sinus. So you got to be careful. On this one, it, it sh you think it should be higher, but it's that one. So every model has a different ovalis. Pay some attention to each model and find that out. Okay? Otherwise, the rest of the stuff I think you can figure out vaguely on your own. But I'm sure you can, in fact. So I'm going to be quiet so you get the rest of your lab to study and do your thing. Do blood slides, heart models, blood typing, all that's next week.